amazed to know what Islam was because you never knew it before that. Or when you're Muslim and you become Christians, you see a lot more about Christianity. Same as Jews, I've seen it. Even Hindus and Buddhists, the completely their eyes opens up. Because the reality of Islam is not what is being manifested in the versions that have been sold by the Muslims of the world. It's totally a perverted versions. All of them are. I said that all these religions are <coughs> originally a beautiful painting. Original parents of yours when they saw Muhammad and they became Muslim and they have this beautiful picture. But you as the children inherited just like a photocopy of it. So it never was like a real one. That photocopy got photocopied again and photocopied over and over and over in, in uh, centuries. So much so that the new version of the religion of Islam is the photocopy of the photocopy of the photocopy of a thousandth time that God looks like devil. Same as with Christianity. Um, Christianity was not like this. That's not what they're teaching. A bunch of, you know, they're trying to uh, picture Jesus Christ like a Batman or a Superman doing a lot of strange stuff, raising out of death and all that. That's not the message. It wasn't the message at all. The message was love your you know, neighbor and don't judge people and be like children. Those things were penetrated people. They saw that this is working. But behind it is an strange mechanism. Again, made by the same God. So when you're a Christians and you become Baha'i, completely get a new concept about Islam and about Hinduism, about Buddhism, whatever. It's really what is uh, working because it's not a translation of words, it's a translation of the ideas, that language of the understanding. This is the power of Baha'u'llah, the founder of the faith, that just creates that connection between, that you will not see each other as a stranger at all. You find you may, you may be finding that your best friends are actually Muslims. For an staunch Christians, I'm saying. Same with the Muslims. Not the people around you. Because all the religions of the past have uh, promised that at the day of resurrection, they call it some of the religions, that the promised one will come. And Baha'u'llah is that promised one. If you're a Christian, go read the book uh, uh, Thief in the Night by William Sears, and then you know it. Baha'i faith is a dynamic religion. It's not a dogmatic religion. It's not a religion made, okay, these are the walls and you have to follow. No, Baha'u'llah has opened the door. This is a religion that can be written yet. Baha'u'llah has revealed the foundations. So, Baha'is, they can write books. If it is truth, and he has said how to do it too, because the principles of the Baha'i faith says the religion has to be according to science and logic. So if you speak scientifically and logically, the Baha'is, which are their elected authorities, your book gets printed among them because a part of the Baha'i faith and goes on and on and on. As Universal House of Justice says, it's an organic religion. It just grows. It's not dynamic. It's not dogmatic. It's scientific. Everything in this religion is based on science and logic. If it's not scientific, it cannot be a part of the Baha'i faith. All right? It's a democratic religion. We don't have no pope, no priest, no self-made individuals. People actually democratically elect nine people in a city, in a country, and in a world. That is their priest by elections, not one, nine. Okay? And it's universal. All the religions of past were continental. The laws of Muhammad and Christ and Buddha cannot be carried over all over the world. Uh, if you want to get take fast like Muslims do, you can't do that in North Pole when it's six months all night. There's no day. Or South Pole probably is all day, so you can't. See, those laws break down there. But Baha'i Faith is universal religion. It's connected to all the religions. The laws of it is very uh, strange. You have to see it. It's a family-based religion. Baha'i faith believes that society 
if it wants to be a live society as opposed to a dead society, as compared to in a stone and a tree. A tree is made out of cells, so it's uh, alive, sustain itself. But the stone doesn't, it's made out of, not atom, it's just made out of atoms, not cell. It's not made out of an individual live unit called cell. A live society is made out of cell. That cell is called family. Mother and father for 15 years, like a womb. They raise the child to love mankind, to love everybody else. The laws that cannot be legislated, postulated, uh, you know, articulated, drawn, written. No, that's just made by the prophets of God. Okay. And it's a practical religion. All the religions in the past, they bring the ideologies, but there's no mechanism how you want to establish it. Could you believe out of uh, uh, Bible came the Church of Catholic Church and Protestant Church and all that, or out of Islam, so many thousand sects. In the Baha'i faith, Baha'u'llah has worked that out too. So it says this is the Baha'i faith. Okay, now I give you a mechanism how to establish it. That is called the World Order of Baha'u'llah in which the priest or the uh, guys that are even gifted by God, they cannot come and manipulate people. It would have to be scientifically and logically going through the elected process and to be established as a Baha'i ideas. There are many, many, many principles. Baha'u'llah is all the religions are one, really. Essentially, they're all one. Maybe Adam taught us bad and good, Noah told us there is God, Abraham said there is one God, Moses says laws from God, Jesus says love from God, Muhammad said there is science, knowledge from God, and Baha'u'llah says now is the time to all get united. This is all foundational of one, it's a nice school, we just pass through it, okay? Men and women in the Baha'i faith recognize an equal, uh, to have an equal opportunity for both of them, they have equal right. No religion has that. No religion. Islam, Christianity, no religion. Except in the Baha'i faith. Religion has to be a common science and logic. There has to be, a, you know, uh, uh, even an auxiliary language in the world, which is right now. So, scientifically speaking, based on the evolution, you can see while Canada is. Uh, evolving, was evolving, I said this before, around uh, 1800, God will also revealing Baha'i faith and these two have great affinities. They're just like a body and soul for each other. If I don't accept and study this solutions, Baha'i faith by God, well then you have to stop uh, the immigrants to come in, okay? Because they have too many different cultures and they don't get along this culture. They call each other's infidels and all kind of a law. Which is, you know, reactionism, going to the past, something that's just not not workable anyways. The second thing, continue to bring in them here with the circumstances that we have and be sure of the uh, uh, breaking up Canada into many Canadas. It will happen if you don't apply this mechanism soon. In my opinion, if an uh, immigrant wants to come to Canada, the first thing that he has to accept, he has to be investigated, that this man, whoever it is from any religion, accept that love between the male and female is ordained by God, by whoever, by nature. And if his son or his daughter wants to marry a deaf man of a different religion, he actually agrees with it, not disagree with it. If he doesn't see this, there is no chance that this man is going to become a part of the system. He is a virus. He wants to stay in the system, but he's not a part of the system. He eventually will rule the system. We have to be very careful, and I'm not particular about a particular religion, any, any religion. If they say we don't accept love, I've heard a lot of stories of the man whose daughter was uh, loving this Christian, the old man, a long time ago, I think it was a Lebanese, even killed his daughter. So many of it is happening. 
Uh, we were in BC around 19, 1998 when I was in British Columbia. The East Indian girl was telling me and Lisa that how is she suffering between the Sikh community because they don't allow him to be with this boy they say is from a lower caste. And she said, never mind me wanting to marry a white man. Oh, he says, I'll be dead. So we've allowed this so far. In my opinion, this has to be stopped because the foundations of the nation making is the natural given God sense of loving each other is to marry. If somebody disagrees with this, he is an anti-Canadian. He is not a Canadian. I can't be a Canadian. It is just, you can, you can allow people to think any ways they want, but this kind of a thinking is exactly like putting too much pepper in this soup. If you have one spoon, it's okay. With two spoons of it, the whole food is not edible. Got to be careful on that. And I'm saying to myself, to all the people, it's a scientific uh, matter. We can't create this uh, parallel Canada of the people who have a vision of one day turning Canada into Islam. Some of them, they think, well, America will become Muslims. And what happens to the rest of the people? You ask him, what are you going to do with them? I guess they have to be either Muslims or the least is that they have to live with the Islamic law. Uh, I really protest this for the sake of humanity, for the sake of... Canada for the sake of the God that was revealed these religions, any one of them. No religion, no religion of God agrees with this. So, but I've also seen the white woman marries the black man and they have son. This son, five, six years, always is confused. Why his dad is black and his uh, mom is white and why others are not like this? Imagine, he's confused. Now, if we in this school, as a teacher, as a student, as anybody watching this, we have to nurture, to explain this thing. We have to protect these people. But we attack them and bullies them. Again, we're going against the idea that has built Canada. We cannot do this. We have to definitely promote these intermarriages in this country soon because those kids are real Canadians they really mix Canada is the secret of Canada and Canadian society is the combinations you see so uh, there's essential two type of countries you know some countries are made out of one particular nations um, but then there are countries that are made of many nations, like Russia, there are many Muslims in it, Christians in it, probably some part of it are Buddhists, but nothing as nothing to compare to that of Canada, in which there are all the religions, all the races, all the languages. The entire world is here. So this multiculturalism, in my opinion, have to be explained. We live in a society, in a city, which are made out of houses, and outside of the house, these houses are private, it's my house, I pay taxes, I am the king of my castle in my house. Outside of it is not my house. Everybody has paid taxes from all different races, cultures to do that. My custom, my multiculturalism has to be limited to my house or the place that I pay money to rent it because I want to have a marriage differently or some religious ceremony. But when you're coming in a public place that has been paid by others, there cannot be. That is the limit of the multiculturalism. It cannot go further down than that. Imagine if you're in a Scottish, you come with a kilt every day. You want to come with your kilt. And this uh, fellow uh, six wants to come with his turban and his kerpan. Mennonites are coming with their dresses. Jewish are coming with their. In this society. And 
my son, 10 years old, comes and laughs and says, look, daddy, why that man is a skirt? Who, who is the, why the hat of man that is like that? So he laughs. Then it becomes insulting to those who are carrying their cultures in the streets. See, there has to be a limit. And this is not about tolerance, that we have to increase the tolerance. Somebody was saying last night, I told him, is that possible? Have you seen a husband and wife, one from Scotland with a kilt, that's the husband, and the wife is a Muslim with the hijab, and their husband and wife, they're walking in the streets. Can you imagine that? It's great, but it's unimaginable. Even if it happens, what kind of tolerance? We have to understand, Canada has its own culture, its developing culture, which is a combination cultures of all the people. If we don't accept that, when you come on this table, you have to understand at the top of this table, you have to bring something of your country, of your culture, which is beneficial to us, and we accept it and we like it. But if you want to push too much under the name of the freedom, then we're going to break down the country. Who's going to stop? Who is here to stop to say that uh, tomorrow religion begins where the husband and wife, they have to have their sexuality done in the public. They say this is our religion. We get naked and we do it. We allow it. We don't. And if we don't, why not? Then we do some and we don't do others. What's going on? What's this playing game? We have to define these things, in my opinion. To have multiculturalism is great. That's the principles of the Baha'u'llah, the new religion of God, unity in diversity. Abdul Baha says if you enter a garden, it's all red, flowers, great, but it's boring. But it's all kind of co uh, colors in it. But those colors have to be natural. If somebody's natural is black or Chinese or Iranian like me, that's natural. Nature is one. That's great. But if I bring my attachment through 10,000 years to that and want to impose it on the rest of the public, and if anybody has any opinion about it, I will be feeling insulted, then, then what? Then we don't have a country, do we? So it's becoming like a theater otherwise, the whole streets. I know it's a very sensitive uh, uh, issue, very, very sensitive. But um, I'm going to have to talk about it because this is there, like Jehovah Witness. They don't give blood. What are you going to do to them? Hotites. They want to come in the street with their uh, buggies. We tell them no. Why do we tell them no? They have the right, it's their religion. It's all traffic system dies, you know. It kills everything if you bring those things on the road. Okay. So. Oh, Lord. So as much as the multiculturalism, which has created these minorities in Canada, is great, it's truly a... a magnificent effort giving on the part of the Canadians and Canadian system, we immigrant ourselves, 99% of us who escaped the system we didn't like to come down here, we do not need to be assimilated with the rest of the Canadians, in a sense follow exactly word by word what they are doing, no, but there are certain principles and limits to which we have to stick and accept it. If you go beyond that limit, we are imposing ourselves on Canada, misusing the laws. The laws of Canada are so feeble, many, many times. They have to be radically changed and I will be talking about it. There's no, I'm going to be talking next time about the laws in Canada. There is no laws to protect the unborn. 
There's no laws to protect the little children's choice and feelings. And then there's thousands of other useless laws somewhere else. Okay? It's because we are forcing it, you see. Very well, this was my opinion and account of an immigrant from Iran 27 years ago when I came here as a young man and now I'm twice as old as when I came and uh, I'm sharing my opinion with my fellow Canadians. See you guys.